Major League Fishing Cups are back and available on My Outdoor TV. Here we go. Start your free trial on MOTV.com to enjoy new episodes of Major League Fishing Cups now. Use promo code YT30. So that's pretty intense. You don't know how much time you have. You know that these guys are probably going to make it happen fast. You just try to manage and handle the pressure the best you can. You just need a little clue. You need something to clue you in. It's really, really tough not to get in a big hurry. On the other hand, you know better than to get in a big hurry. It's the most exciting, aggravating kind of deal that I've ever been through. Mm -hmm. Get in here. Oh my gosh, I just had him. <laughs> and looking for you. Yes! Woo! Bang! General Tires Major League Fishing. It's the Wiley X Summit Cup from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches. Good to go. Good news, we're dressed for the occasion. Sudden death round. It is very cold. Target weight of 12 pounds. I know the target weight's only 12 pounds, but. That's a pretty big mountain to climb under these conditions. Trust me. I've been here and done this. We're going to start out throwing a crankbait this morning. I'm sure everybody else is, too. The bigger challenge is the cold runoff we've had the last couple of days, that cold, cold rain. That hadn't helped anything. Fairly decent zone this time of year. Um, you know, it's not that bad. Only 51 miles shoreline. The first day, we had 120. It's less than half. So, damn. See a lot of bait flipping around, and uh, maybe things will get active this morning. The cut weight's 12 pounds. That's a surprise to me. But I think it could go quick up here. All you got to do is hit the right little school. We're going to see what happens. I mean, just try to find a guy that's not going to catch them. I mean, it's uh, a target weight seems high because the fishing's a little tough, but I doubt it's going to last very long with this group of guys. Yeah, I'm just ready to move on. Sudden death. Ain't nothing like it. Find a spot to stop on and catch 12 pounds real quick. Let's go, boys. Welcome to General Tire's Major League Fishing. 18 anglers have escaped elimination here in Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. Today, nine will face off in sudden death round one. The first four to reach the target weight will earn their place in the championship round. Let's meet today's nine anglers. Qualifying out of elimination round one, he was your winner, Andy Morgan. With a third place finish, Bradley Roy. And finishing in fifth place, Tommy Biffle. The winner from elimination round two, Shin Fukai. With a third place finish, Jordan Lee. And the sixth place qualifier, Jacob Peroznik. He finished second in elimination round three, Marty Robinson. With a fourth place showing, Dustin Connell. And qualifying with a sixth place finish, Tim Horton. Figuring things out on the fly can be rewarding, but with the anglers having no idea where they'll be fishing, they must pack for every situation. Marty Robinson shows us how he prepared for the unknown in today's General Tire Anywhere as Possible. Hey guys, we're here in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina this week at the Major League Fishing Cup event. Getting ready to go out on the water. We're loading the general tire boat up. And, uh, you know, we got a few baits laid out here, I think, that's going to come into play this week. No matter where we go, no matter what conditions we face. The three key baits that I have laid out is a uh, little finesse jig here. I have it on a Lose Pro TI with a 7.51 gear ratio. The next bait would be this little flat side crankbait. It's really good pre-spawn of the year, cold water cranking. I got it paired with a Lose Tournament MP 5.1 gear ratio, a little bit slower gear ratio for that cold water cranking, which I think the water out here this week is probably high 40s to low 50s. And uh, last but not least, I got a little bait for some clear water if we encounter any clear water this week. This is a uh, four inch boot tail swimmer. And I have it on a uh, Team Lose Custom Pro 6.8 to 1 gear ratio. 
between these three baits, I think we're ready to encounter any conditions out there. And uh, hey, with Major League Fishing, anywhere is possible. With no practice and no information, the anglers had no idea where they would be fishing until they pulled up to the ramp this morning. For more on that, let's send it out to Marty Stone for today's Lake Breakdown. Chad, this is turning into a tournament of perseverance. Today in the sudden death round, these anglers are facing more tough conditions, starting with the fact that they've got cold, muddy, rising, fresh water coming into the little Saluda. And that's a fisherman's worst nightmare. And add to that, this is the third day after the front, so that post-frontal situation is truly going to take place here. But these are great anglers. It's going to be interesting to see how they tackle these challenging times. This particular zone covers 2,100 surface acres of water and over 51 miles of shoreline. They're going to see that the cover is very similar to what they found in the elimination rounds, starting with bridges, riprap, laydowns, boat docks, and the key to the docks are the ones that's got the poles and the floats on them. There's also a lot of rock in this particular zone, natural rock that extends out from the points and the vertical walls. Some keys though to the day, and these anglers have got to figure it out quick, is the fact that they got to fish stained water, not muddy water. They're also going to have to find an area they can get multiple bites. These fish are going to be bunched up in small areas. When they get around good cover, the anglers are gonna have to make multiple casts to be able to trigger these bites. And these fish are gonna be shallower than the elimination rounds. When you get stained in muddy water, bass and bait fish all come to the bank. And lastly, and very important, fishermen are gonna have to fish bait to either throw off a lot of thump or have got heavy vibration. Today's conditions, are some of the toughest conditions that every angler that's ever fished in the early spring will face. It's gonna be interesting to see how these great anglers tackle these conditions and which one make the right adjustments to pass the 12 pound target weight. Trying to find the best water color. Everybody's gonna beat the bridge. It's shallow. A nasty red back here. I don't know, it could be that the light's so low, but it looks like really dirty to me. I do remember from years past, there was quite a bit of brush around these docks in this little Saluda. I do know that. In my elimination round, I've, I found a little deal, you know, with, with some rock and some, just looking for a little bit deeper water. So right now, who knows if that'll work in this section, but I'm, I'm looking for, you know, just anywhere that's got a little bit deeper water, maybe with some rock in the water or some wood or something to fish around. I'm just trying to mark as many of those spots as I can before I pick a starting spot. I think I'm gonna start right here. Just kind of fishing this main lake rock. Probably gonna be muddy up this way too, man. That's the thing about this zone, man. It's, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be confined. There's only a little bit of good fishable water. It's gonna fish super small. Not much else to do. Might as well drink a little bit. It's real flat over here. And, and, and the creek channel runs down this bank right here. So we're gonna start right here at the end where it transitions. And then, you know, just try to fish down and hopefully get a bite or two and, and tell us the tale. But, uh, you know, fishing's been really tough. It's cold, not looking for many bites. Just hopefully get a couple big ones. So. But we don't have the rain this morning, thank goodness. But we do have the cold, it is cold. It's in the upper 20s and it's gotten a little colder since we got in. But I do have the frog togs back on. I wear this every day pretty much, you know, unless it's just straight up summertime. I wear the pants just for the, the morning dew. The rain top, of course, you know, when it's raining and when it's cold. Most important thing in the morning, always remember this. Especially when it's 30 degrees, do as much riding around as possible. Try to freeze your cameraman and your boat official to death. You'll find expert bass fishing know-how from Mercury MLF Pro Team Anglers at MajorLakeFishing.com backslash Mercury Pro Tactics. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. 
BMW trailer hitches, towing adventure. Yeti, built for the wild. Sonic, this is how we Sonic. And by Kubota, together we do more. I thought you were gonna fish on that other side. But I was gonna cast right there on this corner. No, that's where I'm starting. We stopped right here. Yes, right where your motor's at, though. We need to be in the top four today. We need to hit 12 pounds, one ounce quick. Or 12 pounds, that's all you gotta hit is 12 pounds. 12 pounds, we're good, so. We're getting ready to get started and see what happens. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. It's sudden death round one, and nine anglers are on Lake Murray, where they'll test their skills in a game of speed. Today's target weight has been set at 12 pounds of bass. The first four pros to hit the mark will advance to the championship round to compete for the Summit Cup trophy. The race to the championship begins now. Let's begin this sudden death. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines in. Beginning of period one of sudden death. Here we go. Sudden death Summit Cup. 12 pounds. Need to find us a stress that's got them. Let's get after it. Got to hit 12 pounds. Definitely doable. The little Saluda, which I've spent a little time in before, pretty much the upper end of Lake Murray here, and it's got a lot of flatter banks, a little shallower water, typically up here. Uh, we ran around pretty much the whole zone, looked at all the water, and you know, it all, all of it's pretty dirty. And this is some of the best water I could find, and uh, Got some good rock here, got a good channel turn, so. Oh, I thought I had a bite right then. I can feel everything on this rod. Like, that. I'm telling you, I can feel every little rock on this rod. It's gonna feel good when one locks up on it. I'm gonna get, oh, I'm gonna get excited if I get a bite. <laughs> 45 degree water, muddy. Fish aren't gonna be very deep, though. Which I like, I mean, they should be, if they are deep, they're gonna be really tough to catch. I don't think they're gonna be right on the bank, but I don't think they're gonna be out in six, seven foot of water, this colored water. Plan is to fish several of these docks. I know up this way, people crappie fish a lot more, a lot more brush around these docks up here in this Saluda. Dang, Tommy ain't caught them up down that stretch right there. That one's good. Old black and yellow jig that I've caught a million fish on. Especially good in muddy water. And that's what we got today is cold, muddy water. We may have to actually try to find a little bit of water that's not as muddy. I, I don't really feel confident in that. Came down on the, on the lower end down here as far as we could come just about and got in the clearest possible water, or cleanest possible water we could find. And, uh, you know, we just got on this steeper, rocky-type bank and uh, started with a bladed jig, and we're going to see how, how it pans out. I think so. The water temperature is too cold. I don't know fish. Any updates? Nope. going to be another adventurous day, eh? <laughs> A few more casts. Get out of here. Today's field is stacked with talent, but with post-frontal weather conditions and cold, muddy water, thinking outside the box could pave a clear path to the championship round. For more on that, let's go out to Marty Stone for today's Wiley X Eyewear, more than meets the eye. As anglers, we're creatures of habit. We attack cover the same way all year round. In early spring, this is the time of the year we truly have got to buck the trends. I look at Lake Murray, what we got in sudden death round with this lake being four foot down, and I see opportunities all around for these anglers, but it's gonna be outside the norm. When they attack the rock structures, whether it's riprap or natural rock, instead of paralleling the bank, they're gonna have to be specific cast out to the very ends of the rock. 
These anglers are gonna have to visualize these fish pulling up for the first time. Same thing on lay downs. As anglers, we're always taught, throw to the thickest part of that lay down. In early spring, you always wanna concentrate on the outer reaches of it. Again, it's the first place these fish pull up. Boat docks, normally we wanna throw to the shady side, the darkest spot. On these bright bluebird cold days, this is a time that the angler really wants to concentrate on the sunny side of the poles. And if an angler can find the floats that have black underneath, that draws the heat in, and that fish truly will go to that sunny side. And in this particular zone, there's one other key piece of cover, individual boat ramps. Anglers that focus on the very tips of these ramps will find hard places with small depressions that these early pre-spawn fish will pull up into to feed. This is a time of the year an angler has got to buck the trends. And today, if these anglers want to be successful, they're going to have to do just that in this sudden death round. Under these conditions, you want to fish fast, but you shouldn't fish fast. Got to be careful not to overdo it. You know, we, we, you got to fish slow in this dirty, cold, dirty water to get bit, but we need to cover as much water as possible this morning because I think, you know, if you get around them, I think they will feed just a little bit this morning, hopefully. Here you go. Get in here. Apparently it's fish landing violation, two minute penalty. I realize it was that big. Oh, he got one over there. Yeah, he got him one. Like a big one, too. Fish smoked. Three pounds, 11 ounces. I want you up on the cold one. Thank you, girl. First anger on the score tracker, Bradley Roy, three pounds, 11 ounces. Oh, that darn big one. He obviously boat flipped it. Probably didn't think it was that big. I really didn't know the fish was that big or I wouldn't have tried to flip her. But the water's dirty and you can't see nothing. That makes the, the third pass I've went over this. That shows you when the water's cold. You know, sometimes you just have to give them more than one try because you know there's fish here. I know there's fish here. Well, there should be. Them's the ones that you're hunting on a day like today. And that's the class of fish that bites. I'm gonna take very many of them boys and we'll be eating breakfast. <laughs> the whole point of these sudden death matches, you know, you don't want to end up suddenly dead. You know, you want to make it to that 12 pound mark before all these other sharks out here want to get there to that 12 pound mark. So we just got to get there before they get there. Is that fish? Yep. <laughs> That's a pretty good shot. Come on. Please, I get you, I get you, I get you. Oh. Got him, got him. Got one you want, one hooks. I almost lost it. Fish number one, maybe three pounder. Two, two pounds, 15 ounces. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Shin Fukai is the second angler on score tracker with one fish for two pounds, 15 ounces. Well, I catch, they biting a little bit this morning. Good to start, good to start. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. In anticipation, boy. That's what keeps you warm on days like today. I'm ready to set the hook. Cold, muddy, they don't want to be up shallow, but they got it. They kind of got to be. They got to get around something. Oh, that was a game changer putting these gloves on. <laughs> Fingertips was hurt. Gloves don't do you any good if you can't cast. These frog dogs, you can cast. 
would love to show you how you can catch one with them on. On any gloves now, all of one. Isn't that amazing? Catching a bass will get the blood flowing. Although catching 12 pounds will get you off the cold water and a ticket to the championship round. Bradley Roy and Shin Fukai are a little warmer after scoring their first bass on Lake Murray. Just over an hour remains in period one, and seven of today's pros are still searching for a sign of life. Man, that's hard to believe there ain't one right through there. That's a perfect little flat and everything. They just ain't nothing on it. Thought that had as much potential as anything we've seen. This little round point, that rock on it. That big tree and this little point was juicy looking. You'd think there'd be one right there, about two and a half pounds. Doink. Good little spot though. Wind blowing on it, shed, rocks, drop, ice in your rods, snot running down your nose. You just need a bass. Little bit shallower than first day. I was throw the crawfish part on, then switch to a little bit yellow in it because the water color is so dirty. As cold as that water is, that fish comes there to the bite. I thought he had it. I wonder how many crankbaits are getting thrown right now from all these guys. You definitely gonna have to use reaction baits in your favor today. Try to get a trigger a few bites. I think definitely the right bait, I mean, you know, it's gonna be a spinnerbait crankbait deal. Not the best weather to be building a spinnerbait in. Can you feel your hands? Oh, them guys will catch some later. Them fish will start moving up. It'll get sunny, they'll slide up, they'll catch a few. Thing is, they big when you get a bite. There he is. Big and two. Yes, sir. Four pounds, 12 ounces. How about that? Bradley Royce caught his second fish. It was four pounds, 12 ounces. Ah. He, he now leads with eight pounds, seven ounces. Old British Corner was the place to be this morning. That gone. Got eight pounds, seven ounces. How do I fish that side of that bridge and I don't get a, sting, uh, a single bite? And that looks like the best side. It's crazy. Let's say old Bradley stopped in the right spot. Ain't nothing special about this. It's just a little, it's more of a finesse jig, a smaller size jig. And in the colder, colder water times, for me, it's just a guaranteed bite. So I know I can get bit with it. He may make short work of this. Dang, we don't even need that big of a one. We just need a good chunk. Come on, let's make this easy. There's nothing better than a jig bite, man. A lot of times, if you think it's sudden death, you don't want to throw a jig because it's slow, but the deal is if you get a bite on a jig, it's oftentimes a better one. Two pounds, 15 ounces. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. He's a good Score tracker update. Marty Robinson, Shin Fukai, both have one fish for two pounds, 15 ounces. You always scare me when you do that. We need to work on that. <laughs> I said, yeah, we coming after you, Brad. The only change we want is my change. You just keep that coming, Mr. Official. He came off a post, dock post, in about two foot of water, so he's super shallow. And uh, I just caught him on this bladed jig. The water's dirty. I think I think this thing's gonna play play some today. Looking for the hook on the fish. Rick, they ought to be smoking that spinnerbait in this dirty water, brother. Well, maybe in this last few minutes here, somebody should catch one. The sun's starting to take hold just a little bit. Oh, it's gonna happen. We just hope it's us next. Oh, yes, finally. 
He caught me off guard, guys. Okay. We might be on something now. Three pounds, zero ounces. Three, three pounder. Look how white and cold that fish is. How about that? Oh my goodness, I finally found one. Oh, thank you, boy. Mmm, I will take it. I'll take it. All right, I know what to do now. They're not on that cranking stuff. Jig, on a jig. Catching good ones is not gonna take very long. Just like that, we're back in it, guys. Well, yeah, we're just, I mean, I'm just trying to get a bite right now, just doing anything I can do. That sun gets to heating this water up on these protected banks. It, it'll heat it up two or three degrees, and then fish will just, a lot of times, come up in the water column and just sun right under the surface. Yeah, it's hard to catch a 12 pound. I mean, uh, hard to catch a second one. I mean, there's nothing going for you here other than the sunshine. And it is going to get a little warmer, but that's all you got going for you. This is just to the five conditions four, you are dealt. Three, two, one. Lines out into period one. First period went well. We still got a little bit to make that cut line. You know, we started out good. We caught two big ones right in, right in a row, and then it's got tough, but it's tough on everybody. So that is the good news. We got a little bit more to get to that cut weight. Hopefully, it happens in period two. This is, it was a tough period. I can't say it wasn't what I expected. I expected it to be tough because the water's dirty and cold. I still have no idea. Still practicing. We never had a bite. Nothing. Zero. Two and a half hours. Now, noon, it's a new game. I sure am glad I had that one bite. It felt good, too. We'll see. We shall see what we can do. I don't think that I can catch them cranking that good because I have cranked a bunch of stuff and I can't catch them cranking. So I think what I'm gonna do is slow way down. Just have to keep plugging away, get a road sign, get a bite, dial us in. But the good thing about it is we still got two periods left. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Boom! Every episode, including live events. <laughs> yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. Going into the first break, I was a little disappointed, to be honest. I felt like I should have closed it out. And I know the score tracker was really not going off that much, and these guys, you know, obviously it's fishing tough, but this group of anglers, you can't let them have very long. They're gonna eventually figure it out. You know, we go through period one, and I had two really good bites on a crane bait, didn't capitalize, mm -hmm. and it has been really, really slow. I had actually got bit in my area, so I, I thought I chose right. I just needed to really figure out what bait to get the most bites on. Might as well eat if we're not gonna catch any fish, you know? Did not catch a scoreable bass, didn't have a bite, didn't have any clues. When it's cold, muddy water, you know, it's it's hard to, to dial in a pattern. You're not gonna get many bites. And I knew going into the second period that I needed to keep doing the same thing and, and maybe I can just get a clue. I went out with the idea the next period to go out and skip a jig on docks and fish real slow because I didn't think these fish were real active this morning because I threw a crankbait a lot and I thought they were really lethargic. The sun's up, it's bright, it's warming up pretty fast and I, I've got a good attitude that these fish, they're gonna pull up this afternoon, they're gonna pull up one bite and you're right in it. So we've still got a lot of time, you know, a lot of fishing left and, and it's, it, you know, everything is still there for the taking to make it into the championship round. While our pros make their adjustments for period two, let's take a look at the score tracker. Bradley Roy owned period one. The Mustad point position leader weighed in two fish for a total of eight pounds and seven ounces. Over half his weight came from a four pound, 12 ounce Berkeley big bass. The bites have been few and far between, but with the quality of bass we've seen so far, it won't take many to reach the 12 pound target weight. 
Just keep looking, keep trying. You know, you don't have a whole lot of choices. You got muddy water, you got docks, you got trees, and that's about it. There'll be some fish caught this period, and especially the last. You may not even go to the last period. The sun shines a deal. This lake had a giant fish, so only one bite. Period two goes the same. We just got to get out there and, and uh, get a bite or two and knock that 12-pound cut line out. We just got to do it. You let these guys hang around long enough, they're going to figure something out. That's what's making me nervous. Three, two, one. Line's in at the beginning of period two. Let's have a better period. Let's do it. Poke around right here a few minutes. Yeah, everybody's fishing the bridge. I don't know who that is. Bradley? Yeah, that's where Bradley caught his. Imagine that. All it takes is one bite. We could be out of here. Just one bite. Oh, buddy, I don't know. Buddy, I don't know what that was. That felt just like a stinking bite. I know that. Caught me off guard. 48 degree muddy water is really tough. And you know, this is pretty dirty. We don't have much visibility, but it's a uh, little corner here. It's got some pretty good water on it. It's a good hard bottom. And uh, I'm just throwing this little old shallow diving crankbait. I've seen some shad. I've seen a lot of shad, marked a lot of shad on the graph out here. I'm really blown away that we've not just got another, you know, bite or two right there. Sometimes like that, even when the water's really cold, sometimes those fish only want to bite in the morning and then they'll, they'll bite sometime in the afternoon as it starts to warm up. I forgot Biffle was fishing. He ain't caught one. He's good cold, muddy water. Boy, it's tough now. Hey, go on. Two in a row. Feeling fishy. <laughs> you keep fooling me. I'm gonna wear the battery out and the scale's going back and forth. That is one. Stay on there, baby. Feels like a good one. It is. I need that seat. Don't shake it, don't shake it, don't shake it. Hey, Roy. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be enough, but it's one step closer. Two pounds, 12 ounces. <laughs> we're a lot closer than we were. I wish it was a three nine, but we'll take it. <gasps> Bradley Roy caught his third fish. He now has 11 pounds and three ounces. Bradley about to go home. He's, he's 13 more, he's done. He, he's 13 ounces from the target weight. Yep. Don't take long to get to 12 pounds if you're getting the right ones. You know, I ain't real sure what Bradley's doing, but he's catching some bass. He caught them good late in the game in that first round. Come back and dang near run me down. Yeah, they on the same deal they've been on. It's just a matter of timing it right, hitting enough stuff. They're just not real eager to, eager to jump in the boat because water temperature's cold enough to keep them slowed down, and it's all right, slow and steady. Gosh almighty, holy cow. All right, we're gonna run back down there to that dock where I had that bite at. See if another one has been moved up. Oh, me, that'll wake you up. Oh, yeah. Huh. Marty, that's a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. <laughs> maybe, if maybe, he'll weigh a pound. One pound, five ounces. Hey, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes, sir. 
a little old turd, hey? I better get back up, man. I got boats on me. Marty Robinson caught his second fish, weighed one pound and five ounces. Moved him to second with four pounds and four ounces. Andy Morgan still ain't caught nothing. Holy smokes. When that man ain't caught nothing, this serious. It'll start the game, but it'll be later on this afternoon. It'll be, this game will be over. Town that water starts to warm back there. As the day goes later on, you got to, seems like you've got to set it right on their head and work it a little slower, slow down with like some kind of pitching bait or small finesse crank bait or something. It's the end of your penalty. Line's in. Let's catch another one, boys. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Berkeley. Your fish, our science. Wiley X Eyewear. Go confidently. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Favorite fishing. The future of fishing. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome to South Carolina and the Lake Murray country region of our state. We love our visitors and we would like you to come visit us. We have an abundance of resources and lovely places for you. South Carolina has plentiful natural resources from our parks, rivers to Lake Murray and its 650 miles of shoreline. Outdoor recreation is flourishing in our state with bass fishing bringing in thousands of anglers each year, impacting South Carolina's local economies. Lake Murray Country, your host for Major League Fishing, has just given me a tour of the new Museum and Visitor Center. And here is Miriam Atria to tell you about it. Thanks, Governor McMaster. This region has an array of outdoor recreation and fun, but when you're not on our waterways, we can fill your day or night with visits to the nationally acclaimed Riverbank Zoo, featuring its newest exhibit of the rhinos, plus 2,000 animals living in natural habitat. We're so proud to have Congaree National Park just down the road, which is visited by thousands annually. Stop in to one of our 12 museums to experience art, history, and artifacts. Columbia and our big city life and small towns are flourishing with growing food scenes, shopping, and hidden attractions. This beautiful region is here for you to discover. Visit LakeMurrayCountry.com and let us plan your stay today. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. We'll slow down just a little bit now that we got a bite. Another bite on the two. Slow down just a little bit, but we still got to keep covering the water, man. Need to catch one like what Marty just caught. It's sudden death round one, and Bradley Roy is just one cast away from advancing to the championship round. Marty Robinson has taken another step toward reaching the 12 pound target weight. Although he still has a steep mountain to climb, the anglers have had over three hours to gather information on Little Saluda, and it's only a matter of time before they crack the code. These little sections, I'm pretty pretty sure the key is to get out of the wind. I mean, I said it earlier, and, and then I catch, I get another bite right here in a little protected area. Just got a little ripple. Seems to be the deal. Let's run back out there where uh... Or some fish have been caught, because this in here is dead. I knew it was going to be slow, but <laughs> I didn't think it would be this slow where there's only actually like five bass caught, six, whatever it is. It's, man. I'm surprised old Jordan Lee ain't pulled a rabbit out of his hat. I promise we're trying. Yep. Why not? Why not? Oh, no. That's the long folks. I get you. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Oh. Two pounds, two ounces. Two, two. Yes, yes. Dot 
fish is big, big, big for this tournament. So, yep, that costs a lot, lot. Thank you, thank you, Lo. Shin Fukai has caught his second fish. Weighed two pounds and two ounces. It moved him to second with five pounds and one ounce. Well, we've made a four. You're in fourth right now with three pounds, zero ounces. Um, I don't know whether to crank or throw a jig. I ain't got a clue. So exciting going to one fish because of not many bites today. So, yeah, I was thinking about the finesse stuff, but they're still eating the crankbait. I think we're going to go back down a little bit. I think this up here is getting too flat, too shallow. Not any rock banks or anything, so I think it's uh, probably time to move. But that fish is maybe. That right here is two foot, maybe. They eat in three foot. Still shallow. I've been trying to crank and fish, you know, and the water's muddy. So in my opinion, there's got to be some that are that are up there ready to, uh, you know, ready to do their deal. They're not very far off, so we're going to fish some docks and see if we can get a bite or two. First one. Ate it, too. <clears throat> nice. Nice. Two pounds, three ounces. Nice. First one. He's on a giant, but he's one step closer. Oh, JoJo got him one. Dang. I need to catch me one. Mm. One more of them, and we're we'd be in the good right now. Just going down some riprap. I mean, just I, he just smoked it. I mean. Got the right bait. I mean, when they eat it like that, just need to reel it across for one. Well, there's two fish caught pretty recent, so maybe they're starting to bite a little bit. I do know how to catch one. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Okay. Holy moly. I have been looking for you all day. Jacob Perot caught his first fish. Weighed three pounds and 13 ounces. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One bite, all it takes. I pitched up there to the lay down and picked up. I mean, it smoked it, man. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. All right, let's go. Just try not to pass up anything. It only takes one. So there's been three call here in the last 20 minutes. Gives us some hope. All we need to do is get a bite from a five pounder. Only 30 minutes remain in period two, and the bite is picking up on Lake Murray. Shin Fu Kai has moved into second place, while Jacob Parosnik and Jordan Lee have put their first stamp on the score tracker. Bradley Roy is still one bite away, and he needs to close it out before the rest of the field starts catching up. I'm ready to catch me something bigger than one pound and move the heck on out of this place. The looks of this, I thought it'd have a little more rock, but it don't feel like it's got any down there. If they're not biting a crankbait, I mean, it's hard to beat a jig, you know, because it makes you slow down and actually actually fish and just kind of fish real slow around some actually targets, you know. Ready to catch one of them white jokers. Man, this cold, muddy water, you know they're going to be white as a ghost, you know what? Scare me. Oh. I'm going that way. That's a good one. Three pounder. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Two, 12. Two, 12. 
Score tracker update. Shin Fukai has caught his third fish. How long do we have? 21 minutes. Oh, maybe this is the light bait. This is the light bait. I'd hate to have to get that shaky head out. We might do something. Yeah, they still on the shadow, but nearby deep, so that's what I'm looking for the first day. Exactly the same as the first day. These boys back here begging me to go to breakfast. They're like, won't you just hurry the heck up? I said, it's not for lack of effort, I can promise you that. Fish go hit some of these little short pockets off the main drag. They're gonna be the warmest and least affected by the run in and the terrible cold now. Maybe they're catching up with some of the sunshine, warming them up. We better do something, Timmy. I'm telling you, we gotta get with it, brother. Come on, baby, we need one more. Getting better, but. Everybody looking for the one big bite, so it include me, so I'm I, I'm not done yet. So. <laughs> Robinson got him one, two boys. That in the way a pound. One pound, ten ounces. Oh, there you go. A little pounder. Thank you, buddy. Mm. Yeah, I knew we could catch one in here. Jeez. You can tell it when the water looks right. They're biting. It's time to catch one. We don't need to mess around much longer. Well, the water looked a little better back in here. Oh, and the place we just left, the water was, I mean, it was a lot dirtier than this. One minute. There's one. Pretty sure. Thought it was a fish. Yeah, it is. Place down there, baby. Oh, it's the bigger than I thought it was. Don't you come off, don't you come off. Yes. We're done. It's the worst fish landing we've had, but we don't care. Two pounds, seven ounces. Never made it to period three. Thank you, fish. Rhino roll is out. Three, two, one, lines out. That's the end of period two. Oh, that was really eventful. I mean, I just feel like a gorilla just got off my back. All these dudes started catching them. Hadn't hardly been any fish hitting the score tracker at all. And it's just, bam, they all started catching them at once. And even though they're not getting that close yet, you just feel the pressure coming. And, uh, wow. I can't tell you how good that feels. It was a pretty good period. We caught two. Just so happened it was small. I don't know what the deal with that was, but, uh, Got a little more confidence we may actually get a bite, but boy, it ain't much more. Well, you know, got a bite off a log, so probably continue to do that during the third period, and hopefully we can uh, catch a couple and move on up, but still just tough, man. That's all I can say. We're still in it. We got, you know, one more period to see what we can do. I think if we can catch, I think we can catch two fish, we're gonna be close, so we'll see. Next few fish, maybe two fish, then. Go home. It's it's crazy. You just you know you need one more bite, and running around hitting everything I know to hit, everything that looks good, everything that should be right. Just trying trying to hit enough out till you get another bite. Finally, I did not want to have to live through period three. <laughs> yeah. Championship round. Here we come. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup. Presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. It's sudden death round one, and the anglers are on their final break of the day. I ate the spicy something the other day and had to drink three of them squinchers. <laughs> Ain't nobody caught a five-pounder yet. I'm waiting on it. 
you get on the right deal, you catch two or three really quick, that's going to make a world. I still feel good. I still feel great about it. Fired up, confidence is good, and um, just got to execute. That's all it is to it. While our pros prepare for period three, let's take a look at the score tracker. Bradley Roy is our first angler to cross the 12-pound target weight and has earned his ticket to the championship round. Only three spots remain, and Shin Fu Kai is just over four pounds from the target weight. The anglers are dealing with brutal fishing conditions on Lake Murray. But the ones who don't perform in period three will have to deal with elimination. Let's send it out to Marty Stone, who's with Bradley Roy for today's Yeti Cooler Talk. Is there any tougher conditions? Cold, muddy, fresh, run-in water. And that's what we let you guys loose in today. It doesn't get a whole lot tougher, you know. It definitely makes it challenging this time of year. You know, when, when you see that dirty water, um, and then you got that water temperature this morning when we put the boat in, boats in, it was 46, 47. That really limits your opportunities and, and ways that you can catch bass, and it definitely toughens it up for sure. I've watched you in your elimination round and then in sudden death, and there's a rhyme or reason it's not haphazard. Every time I see you, you're next to a vertical bank, so you're within a cast of really deep water. Every time I get near you, when I look down on the depth finder, there's bait everywhere and you've got a nice combination with a jig and a crankbait going on. Talk about it. Yeah, it's just, it's simple wintertime fishing. You know, I grew up wintertime fishing. I love that. And the lake is down a little, so it really limits what you can fish on the bank as far as structure. These fish aren't deep because the water is dirty, so you have to find something on the bank, but you have to find something really close to that deep water. And it's honestly, for me, it eliminates a lot of water and makes it easy. You just run around till you find something that's a little bit more vertical, stop in there and fish, and once you get enough of them, you'll find them. Talk about as you switch up the crankbait and the jig, because there's very specific things I'm watching you do with both lures. Yeah, it's just, to me, it, it's it's a one-two punch. You know, I think both of them could play at any time for me. This morning, it seemed like they were a little bit deeper. They were setting off that break a little more. I cranked a little section twice, back and forth, and didn't have a bite, and I spun around with a jig and caught two big ones and missed one with a jig. That showed me that they were sitting off just a little bit more this morning. And then this afternoon, they moved up on that crankbait you know, as they sucked to those rocks as the sun warmed things up. Bradley Roy is in a class by himself. Both days that he's fished, it's been extremely tough, but he's been consistent, not only with the type of areas he's looking for, but the choice of baits. Heading now to championship round. Round three, sudden death. One guy's out. Shin is going to be hard for anybody to catch, but I think it's anybody's game for those last two spots. Well, we're just going to go somewhere else in this uh, course and uh, see if we can pull up on something and catch one. I need one or two bites. Oh, goodness. I got two and a half hours to do it. Come on. One or two daggum bites. Oh, come on. I mean, two bites and we're in. Jig, spinner bait, and that's about it because I'm out of the mood to throw anything else. <laughs> Three. My way or the two, highway. One. Starting to warm up a little bit. I may even take my gloves off right now. Water temperatures came up maybe two degrees since this morning, not a whole lot. I think it started out at 47. It's up to 49.5 right now. So, uh, you know, it's creeping up. The fish are biting maybe a little better than what they was first thing. So, uh, I think, you know, guys catching my biggins later on today. Well, I've caught a lot of old biggins in February rolling them. Big old spinner bait around like these. Give me two fish, two fish. Mm -hmm. Three pounds, four ounces. I like the way you did that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, when you catch one, it's a darn good one. <clears throat> I know everybody knows Mike Iaconelli. He says one bite, maybe two bites, it's a pattern. So, we're going to see. <laughs> 
I mean, it feels good, man. I like, I like he. He didn't tell us what he's throwing, did he? I, I know it's going to be slow, you know what I'm saying? So I, I know, but I, I've gotten two bites off the same kind of thing, you know? So it tells me that there, there, there's some fish there. Oh my God, I missed him. Come on, man. God dog it. Oh, I just had a bite. Oh, I just had a bite. I know for a fact that was a bite. Dang. Might have been something little, you know what I'm saying? But. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Fish landing violation, two minute For breaking the rod? <laughs> Three pounds, 13 ounces. You fat. Mwah. Andy, I'm going to give you a score tracker update. Jacob Prosnick just caught back to back three pounders. He's up to 10 pounds, 14 ounces. Oh, golly, boom. Back to back three pounders. That's all it takes. And just kind of casting, you know, these logs, it's a flat bank. And, uh, you know how it just kind of tapers out and these logs are laying out there and then there's like limbs and stuff that are out there and they're just suspended in them limbs, you know. I, I missed one the first time and I worked it on out there and when I went to pick up, he's coming to me, you know, so I know what they're doing. I mean, typical, how, how I didn't. <laughs> My gosh, starting to bite. That's what it sounds like. I'm so excited, I'm jacked up. He can give me another. I still got bass all slime all over my lips. One more. One more. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Squincher. Hydration that works. Six Sour. Never settle. Wiley X Eyewear. Go confidently. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. Hey, old j Powell stumbled on to something. Maybe we can catch us two, three pounders. Back to back. Jacob Rosnick just pulled in seven pounds of bass out of this honey hole full of laydowns, as you can see here in today's favorite fishing overview of the day. We won by the way, baby. Three championship spots remain in today's sudden death round, and if Jacob Rosnick's area stays hot, there will be only two. Jacob is the first angler to catch back to back fish in today's zone. If the bite window stays open, any one of these pros has a shot to shake up the score tracker. Calm down now, Price. You got this. You're good. You're golden. Back to back, big ones. They're starting to pull away. And I'm starting to not catch anything else like I have been doing. I was, I was second when I started last final period. Well, that quick, change it. Andy Morgan still ain't caught nothing? Still nothing. See, I thought that would have been good timing. I mean, it's 50 degrees in here. Sun's up. I mean, it's time to come in here and fish a little old shallow pocket like this. <laughs> I got him. It wasn't pretty, but I got him. Marty, that's a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. <laughs> oh, it wasn't pretty, but we got it. <laughs> that was ugly. Ah, yeah. It's a three pounder. Three pounds, seven ounces. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. Looked like a drunk man, but we caught him. Oh, God. Marty Robinson caught another fish. His last fish was three pounds, seven ounces. My gosh. I don't see how we're not getting bit. At least by something. Y'all ever seen anybody dancing around a boat like that? Boy, that's why they call me Marty the Party. <laughs> oh, I got these old claw hopper boots on. And I stepped right off the deck, and there wasn't no turning back. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, let's move along. Go to the next little bank. Try to get lucky. There's a the fish. Gosh, what a bite. Holy cow. I got this loose reel. I got it on a flipping stick, paired on a flipping stick. This is the Lou's Custom Light. It's the lightest reel that Lou's makes. And uh, this is all I'll put on all my flipping rods because uh, it's the lightest weight. You got this big rod, you know, that's, that's your heaviest rod in your arsenal. So I put the lightest reel possible on that. Man, it's just an awesome setup. You can flip it all day. You, you don't get fatigued. It's real sensitive. It balances out the rod real, real well, and it, uh, you know, it feels like a real light combination. Like I said, a lose custom light, a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio. Something that you can take up a lot of, a lot of line with. One bites. I think I was on some fishing line right there. I gotta get on some kind of hard structure. I can't just go down these rocks. I ain't had a stinking bite on these rocks. We need to fish pretty quick from dock to dock or lay down to lay down. I am not getting bit in between. I promise you, well, I'm not promising because that's a big thing, but right over there in one of them lay downs ought to be a bite. That sun shining on it. Man. Where are you? That might do it. How about that? It's an ugly but pretty fish right there. Don't I need two of Marty, you need two pounds, 11 ounces to reach the 12 pound target weight. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Way heavy. Way heavy. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Woo, man, that's pushing four, ain't it? God. Look at that fish. That's it, boy. We out? You're out. All right. Second angular advance to the championship round, Marty Robinson. 13 oh. pounds, two ounces. He must call him a big one. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Yes, sir. Nice one. Two spots left. Good for old Marty. Congrats, Marty. Damn. Two spots left. And that just goes to show you how tough fishing is a lot of times in the springtime. But, you know, when you see how it develops all throughout the day, you know, it, it looks pretty bad. But, you know, that's the way fishing is a lot of times. Just, I just started looking for wood on calm banks out of, the, out, out of the north wind. That seems to be the banks that was heating up a little bit better. And uh, it turned out the whole fish and, and uh, the pattern worked, you know. It was slow, but it, it did work. It got us through. We on to the championship round, baby. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Boom! Every episode, including live <laughs> events. Yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing. That might do it, boys. That might do it. How about that? Good for Maury. He did good today. He caught fish. His last pitch was three pounds, 13 ounces. That's a good one. Everybody's catching them three 13s. 
All right. Yeah, Whew. it took us all day, but we got it. We got it done. Marty Robinson has crossed the 12-pound target weight and is headed to the championship round. Jacob Porosnik is on deck to be the third angler to advance, and Shin Fu Kai is just over four pounds from closing it out. The bottom five anglers have a tall order to fill, but Robinson and Porosnik have proven how fast things can happen. For more on that, here's Marty Stone for today's Six Hour Success Insight. This day started out as a grind, but now in this third and final period, score trackers starting to heat up. And a lot of that's got to do with the sunshine being out. Marty Robinson's now the next man out, joining Bradley Roy heading to the championship round. And Jacob Prosnick looks to be one bite away from doing the same thing. Both of these anglers are concentrating on similar type of water. Prosnick's focusing on laydowns and logs that's leading into the pockets. And he's wanting to be on the channel swing side. That's the deeper water that's leading to the back of the pockets. And these fish are sitting up at the end of these laydowns and logs, and they're feeding before they move all the way back in. He's casting a jig and dragging it all the way out, being slow and methodical. Marty Robson, he's doing a lot of his damage around boat docks, and the last fish that he caught was off a little rocky vein, but he was on the channel swing side as well. The key for these anglers is focusing on that deeper water, hard cover is available, but there's one last thing that both of these anglers are focusing in on. They want to be out of the wind. In these early springtime tournaments, wind is definitely not your friend. The rest of this field, they've got the work cut out for them, but we're starting to see quality bass show up, so at any moment, it could happen. I spent two and a half periods doing nothing but this and had two little bites and didn't catch either one of them. You know, I, I, I threw the spinnerbait in there first and uh, I never threw the jig in there, so that's where we started. So I'm gonna ease back up here and fish these couple logs with the, with the jig just to see if, if it's a jig deal, which I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> we might as well pack up for sure. Goodness. How in the world? Man, they're starting to move up and bite, but I don't know where to go. But I mean, that gun, one bite, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Got my rod. Gosh, Jordan, that's going to be a two-minute fish landing violation. That gummit. Man, he didn't bite it. Didn't know that was barely a bite. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Is the same fish everybody else is catching. Oh, she's white. It's a good one. Just need another bite or two. About my luck. Stinking striper. Barely just grabbed it. Just a half ounce double Colorado spinnerbait. Been trying stuff like this all day. I mean, this looks good. It's a good looking pocket right here. Got some lay down. You just, I don't know, keep grinding at it. I cannot buy a bite. Uh, I'm like Andy. Can't get lucky. Cannot get lucky. Shocking! It is actually this tough. You just don't think it could happen and get this tough. I mean, we're in a we're in a little deeper pocket right here, and he's on a piece of wood. I mean, just I mean, really, just textbook. But until you get that bite, shoot, you don't know. It's real calm in here. Um, it's kind of like a north-facing pocket, I guess. So we got a north wind. Watch out. Come here. It ain't over yet, baby. 
Yeah. Ain't over yet. Come on. Nope. Wrong guy. <laughs> Three pounds, 15 ounces. Whew, 315. Let's go. Dang. Let's go. Come on. Come on. It ain't over yet. Justin Connell just caught one. Weighed three pounds, 15 ounces, moving his total to six pounds, 15 ounces. What place is Dustin in? Is he fifth? He's fifth. Shins in fourth at the elimination line, seven pounds, 13 ounces. Getting tight. Jordan Lee's setting it six pounds even. Wow. All right, we're going to go back out there toward the mouth. I ain't got no depth in here. Let's go back out there where I had that bite at. Come here. Come here. We done. <laughs> I, he ju I just fished that. <laughs> I just fished that. He caught one. <laughs> Four pounds, 14 ounces. All right. <laughs> oh, big lips, babe. Just fished one, he went out. Just fished that, and he went out right there. That is unreal. Pretty fish, man. Mwah. I love you. See you, Lake Mary Jewel. Jacob Parazic has uh -oh. caught his fourth fish. It weighed four pounds and 14 ounces. He has reached the target weight of 12 pounds. Has there been a one pounder caught today? I don't think there has. That's crazy. I pulled in a pocket at the it first start of the third period, end up catching two, miss one. And then I get to run around, I'm like, man, I gotta find a 45 degree bank with a log laying out there. And the first one I get to, there it is. I mean, I guarantee you there's one in those two. Whew. Stressful, stressful, stressful. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. <laughs> oh, big lips, babe. Just fished one, he went out. Dang, I'd have went out, too. Only one spot left. Jacob Parosnik is headed to the championship round, and only one of the six remaining anglers will earn the fourth and final spot. Shin Fu Kai, Dustin Connell, and Jordan Lee are stacked up tight. If the 12 pound target weight isn't reached when the clock runs out, the fourth place angler will advance and the rest of the field will be eliminated. Well, it ain't your time to make it. It is just not your time. I fished in this little Saluda for 20 years off and on. Every time I come down here, I check the little Saluda. And every time I leave here, I'll say I'll never be back. Striper. Still no movement. No movement. What's Shin got? Shin has seven pounds and 13 ounces. Uh, to catch you then. I knew Shin was going to make his fish to 4.30. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it pretty close, three guys. Ah. Why ain't you caught one yet? I had no idea. Same reason I ain't caught one yet. I caught three stripers, and that's it. <laughs> Good Lord. Y'all get to do this again tomorrow. You're going to get to do it again in another day. I hope you're right. I'm ready to get dialed in on something. I've actually hooked something. I think it's a, yeah, it's a bass. Three pounds, four ounces. All right. We did catch one in the little Saluda. Here's proof. 
<laughs> what a beautiful fish. Didn't take us but about eight hours. We got us one. Andy Morgan caught his first bass of the day. It weighed three pounds and four ounces. Come on. One two pounder. I know she bites, it ain't gonna be no two. She picked a three quarter ounce spinnerbait up with a hubcap blade, and we have captured us a three pounder. One of my favorite ways to catch them. We've thrown it around quite a bit today, but probably just not deep enough. Yep. Yep. I go on. I go on. Finally. Please. You the bass? Yep, that's the bass. Yeah. The fish landing yep. violation, two minutes. That's fine. That's fine. One pound, 14 ounces. I'm 14. Woo! Dang. <laughs> Little guy, but that's fine. Two minutes, right? All right, Hail Mary. Hail Mary time. <laughs> I have moved and fished and fished and fished. And Oh, it's hell Mary down. Little bit of cast. But when I when I got that that bite, it feels like a catfish. It looks like a ton around, so mm, it's not bass, it looks like catfish, but it was bass. 114 bass. Alright. Last two raw. Now we'll get us a five pounder, make the cut. <laughs> Could happen. Oh my gosh, I just had him, dude. That gummit, I just had him. Dang, I just had him. He was walking off with it. Jordan Lee and it depends on Lee and Canel. We are so tight. Yep, got another one. God, got the big one, I think. How many minutes left? That's a big one. That's a giant. That's a giant. That's a giant. Yes! Bang! Dang! <laughs> yes! Last two minutes. That's a four pounder. Ding! Ah! <laughs> four pounds, 11 ounces. Four, 11! Bingo, yes! <laughs> thank you, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ding! I'm in the last place, catching 411. Shinichi Fukae. Thank you. Well, there you go. There's the end of the road for old Jordan. Good for Shin. That's the end of Sunday. I'm so now. tired. There he is. Oh, you know how mad I'd be if I had a bite right now? Well, congratulations to the guys that made it. It was a tough day and you earned it. Get it, son. Get it. Recap of my day was it was sorry. Never had a bite from a bass that I know. Fished everything that I saw that looked good and still didn't get a bite. And uh, it was just one of those days. When you can't get comfortable, you know, it's comfortable all day, I guess that ain't the right word, but when you can't get a you know, a, a deal dialed in to go work towards makes it really tough. Congrats to the guys moving on. I'm ready for the next one, I promise you. Oh, me, it was tough. When you see Andy Morgan catch one, it ain't real easy. Some of them boys made it look easy, though. That's a good show, right? <laughs> Dang. 
General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Mossy Oak. Hunt. Fish. Repeat. Abu Garcia. Fish to win. Optima Batteries. The ultimate power source. And by Barbasol Shaving Cream and Razors. A close, comfortable shave for the past 100 years. 12 pounds was the line to cross in today's sudden death round. But the cold, muddy water of Little Saluda presented quite the challenge for today's nine anglers. However, one angler conquered the conditions and made a tough day of fishing look easy. Bradley Roy started strong in period one and quickly showcased the quality of bass that live in Lake Murray. I'll we'll take very many of them boys and we'll be eating breakfast. By the end of period one, Bradley had clued into a pattern and knew exactly how to trigger the stingy bass into biting. Roy continued his charge in period two, but after getting within 13 ounces of the target weight, his bite went cold, and the rest of the field started adding weight to the score tracker. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Roy stayed focused, and after a long dry spell, yes. he landed a two and a half pounder and punched his ticket to the championship round. Let's catch up with Bradley Roy and check out his winning baits in Bass Pro Shop's end of the line. Hey, I'm Bradley Roy, and these are the baits I use to win my sudden death round and move on to the championship round. You know, I got a crankbait in one hand and a jig in the other. This is a finesse jig. This is what I got bid on early in the day. It's a 3 8 ounce, you know, just brown and green pumpkin, nothing fancy there, just a standard chunk on the back. Pretty typical wintertime type setup, cold water setup. This is just a jig to me that, for me, is a guaranteed bite. If I get this around fish, I'm probably going to get a bite. Uh, it's not a big, huge offering, but it, it's definitely something that a big fish will still eat. Once the sun progressed a little and the water did start to warm up, I transitioned over to a crawfish color crankbait. It's a six-foot diver, and I would just put this down on the rocks, keep it on the rocks, grind it around, and I did end up finishing out the day hitting that target weight with this crankbait. <laughs> These are the two baits that I used to move on to the championship round. I mean, I just feel like a gorilla just got off my back. Here are the final results from sudden death round one. Bradley Roy was our first angler to cross the 12-pound target weight, followed by Marty Robinson, Jacob Porosnik, and Shin Fukai. These four anglers are headed to the championship round for a chance to win the Wiley X Summit Cup trophy. The Berkeley Big Bass of the day was reeled in by Jacob Porosnik, who secured his spot in the sudden death round with this four-pound, 14-ounce hammer. <laughs> oh, big lips, babe. Today's Barbasol close shave goes to Shin Fu Kai, who landed two bass in the closing minutes to claim the fourth and final championship yeah. spot. Bang! Dang! <laughs> yes! Let's send it out to Marty Stone, who's with our final qualifier, Shin Fu Kai. Last two minutes. Shin, an elimination round, you won it. Now, your first ever sudden death round. <laughs> <laughs> and you're that guy that's right there on the line. Talk about the emotions of the closing moments. Uh, when, I, when I came here, I knew we going up to the river. But basically, I'm not fishing that dirty water most of uh, basically. When I came to this lake, basically the water could get a clear and deep water, then using spinning rod. But we have a, no choice, so I decided to a little bit adjust my, my crankbait. The first day, I'm using the, the crawdad cutter, which is a red cutter. Mm -hmm. Then when I look at the water cutter, I switch oh, to the chartreuse cutter. Looks, it paid off. You struggled like everybody else did in that first period, and you made some adjustments. What was it like having that score tracker go off and guys were going out and you weren't one of them? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the last, last period, I was second. Then three spots left. But other guy already take it. Then other guy already take it. So I only one left. So I was thinking maybe I would better keep cranking. Don't touch other fishing pole. So I decided to the one fishing pole on my hands, then yes. keep cranking really, really slowly, make a patient. <laughs> That's paid off too, so. What does it mean to you, your very first cup you're heading the championship round. Yeah, I'm so happy. Maybe my 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 wife is more happy, but I'm 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 so happy for that. I'm so exciting. Shin Fuka, 
dominated his elimination round. And then, by the skin of his teeth, he barely got in on the sudden death. But most importantly, he's advancing the championship round. Make sure you tune in next week for Sudden Death Round 2 of the Wiley X Summit Cup. Presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Lake Murray Country, South Carolina. Until then, thanks for watching General Tire's Major League Fishing. Bam!